Hey everybody, remember that video we made a while ago showing you how to import a plan or import a 2D plan into SketchUp for iPad and scale it up so you can start building it? Well, the second video is here. And in this video, we are going to talk about how to create the guidelines to help you build that plan. So we're going to stretch guidelines to the dimensions in the plan, and then we'll start building the plan from there. Ready? Now, in our last video, we talked about the step-by-step -step process for importing and scaling a plan in the SketchUp for iPad. And uh, we went over the basics, adding a reference scale ruler, in this case, in my Procreate plan, adding a ruler to make it easier to scale something up that's more definitive than just the fuzzy lines of the drawing itself. And then we talked about the same thing in Morfolio, how Morfolio, of course, has their own built-in scales. But in this case, I like to take a screenshot and then I export that to iCloud. And so that way I can import a Morfolio plan directly into SketchUp. And then we talked about the preferences in SketchUp for iPad. And all of this is in that first video, so don't worry that I'm going fast. But you have to make sure you indicate what kind of measurement you want. And then in the settings wheel, once you launch that new program, way up here, You've got to make sure that you have got Just Draw indicated, and that's how uh, I like to use the pencil. I don't like to use my fingertips. So, And then we talked about inserting that image, going to the three-dot menu, finding the import image, browsing the files, bringing in your plan, tapping on the origin and drawing it gently across from left to right, and now you've got your plan in, but that isn't scaling yet, and then we scaled it. We tapped the measuring, the tape measurement tool, and we drew our line across from a known point from zero to 44. That scale was embedded in the drawing, of course. Then we tapped in the length box and added the actual dimension, and we agreed to SketchUp. We wanted to scale it up, and voila, we had our plan. And again, all of this is in the first video, and you, you can see the link for that in the upper right corner as we speak. And then we had to still bring that plan back over to the origin because it was just in there and it was scaled up properly, but we hadn't dragged it to the origin yet. And of course, we wanted to double check our scaling. So we, we checked it with one of these lovely SketchUp employees. And I'm afraid we were a little bit indignant and we rotated him so that we could prove that he was actually five feet, eight inches tall. He may be taller, but we're not really sure. And I'll be seeing him shortly at the SketchUp conference, so I don't, I don't want to tease him too bad. But we covered all of that, and now we left off with how do we start laying out the guidelines? Now, if you're in plan view from the top down or otherwise lost, just remember you can use that two finger pinch to get back to the full sheet size. Then I'm gonna tap on the orbit tool and start to move it so I feel good about how I'm gonna start pulling these lines. I like to pull from a left to right motion. I'll use the magnifying glass, the zoom tool to come in there with a up and down stroke. I'll bring up the pan again and navigate around. And this is great to get this kind of muscle memory down, learning all these different tools. So now I'm gonna to go to the tape measure tool and I'm gonna look for the red axis lock and I'm gonna start, I'll just do a practice pull. So sure enough, that's the wrong axis. <laughs> I wanna go back to the green axis. So I'll pull that. And these, by the way, all of these sub menus next to these tools are fantastically helpful. So you can see the vertical lock tool is being demonstrated right now. Just wiggle it until you see the dotted lines lock in and you can pull things. So this really helps you get oriented. Now let's go back, undo arrows at the top left and we'll position this again. We can use our fingers to position it. And let's set that red lock and let's come across, and once again, we're just gonna practice. Let's come across to that first 24 foot dimension, okay? And notice that the readout isn't quite 24 feet. So I'm gonna go into model info. And actually, I don't think that's the right place. I'm gonna go, yeah, it is the right place. I'm gonna go back into model info and I'm gonna to touch the precision window right now. 
let's get a better close-up of that, into the model info, tap on the precision box, and you can see a sixteenth of an inch, that's way more precise than I want to be right now in concept design. So I'll set that to one inch first of all, and then I'll lock in the length snapping function, okay? So this is going to make things a little bit snappier, a little bit faster, and I don't need to be more accurate than one inch, that's for sure. So now I'll go back and I'll make sure that the tape measure tool is still activated, and now I'll go to that red axis lock and I'll pull across and get as close as I can to 24 feet. It sort of jumped there at the end, but I'll try it again. Let me see. Uh, start on that axis of orientation that's already there. I'll pull to 24. It's a little jumpy still. That's okay. I'll stop there. I got 24 4, but all I have to do is tap in the box and turn that into 24. Press enter and boom, I've got my first dimension, okay? I'll come across here again. Just double check that. Sure enough, it snaps to 24 feet. So everything seems to be working. Now there's no particular method to my madness quite yet. I'm just getting the feel of this thing. You know how that is. You have to kind of re-familiarize yourself with every project when you start. So I'm kind of thinking out loud here and something about this doesn't quite feel right to me yet. So I'm gonna tap on the eraser and just flick those lines and off they go. And now I can kind of recalibrate my thoughts, pull that 24 foot dimension across again, try and get right on. This time I got lucky. And now I'm gonna come back six inches, all right? So I'll just start to try and make sense, working from big to small, from the full room dimensions to individual walls. And that at least has me started. And this is, this is very typical of dimensioning where you really are, at this point, I'm using SketchUp to help me think about the floor plans, okay? And you can see, again, these wonderful tags. I can turn off the plan and just see the lines when I need to, when I need a clarity, which I often do. Now, let me start again. I'm going to come across from the end of that living room wall, and I'll pull that eight feet that's in my underlying plan, and then I'll just start pulling what I know. I'll pull a six inch bathroom wall. Maybe I'll make that one the four inch wall. I know space is gonna get tight. This is supposed to be a very affordable little second home. I pull the five feet and you can see I'm in trouble already, okay? Reality is not matching up with my wishes here, but I'm gonna stick to it because it is a thinking tool. Not, not, no one's supposed to come in here and get it right the first time. This is really helping me think through the dimensions, okay? So let's try it one more time. What would be an acceptable width for that bedroom? An absolute minimum, like you might see in a 1950s second home, an early modern architect's second home. And they were very small bedrooms. So I'm gonna to go to eight feet, and then I'll pull a six inch wall past that. I'll at least update that with my energy codes. And there I am, I've got my first set of dimensions in the south to north dimension. And let's just check those. What's the overall now? 46 feet, two inches. I had been hoping for 44, but I'm just gonna have to uh, adopt on the fly, okay? So again, this is the value of this tool. Now let me turn the plan 90 degrees and let's talk about coming back the other way, okay? So I can change the lock now to the green axis, and I'll start pulling these lines. And let's just see, at this point, my thinking has converted over to, let's see how wrong I am, rather than I can't wait to see how right I am. So there goes my 13 foot four dimension on that bedroom, then a six inch wall. Maybe I'll come all the way across. I. I do like to work from the biggest possible dimension to the smallest, so I'll throw that. And I'm always using a four inch or a six inch or a two inch dimension. I'm trying to use things where it's gonna be easy to cut them. I'm not, I certainly don't wanna be anywhere near a fraction of an inch at this point. So let me go 12 foot eight there. And I'm on a roll here because I'm 
actually hitting these numbers, which is nice. I've got my six inch exterior wall. So I've got the beginnings of this courtyard. Now let me pull my, oops, let's try that again. Make sure I've got my green axis lock on. And I'll pull over to six inches. And notice that I'm resisting, oops, I'm resisting the idea of immediately starting to build this project, okay? Um, you could call me uh, a procrastinator if you wanted to, but for me it's about getting that overall understanding, you know, seeing what I'm up to, seeing if all this makes sense before I start building the model, because everything that I get right at this stage saves me so much time on doing it later. And the last thing I'll do here is I will select the move tool because I have to pull that plan back over to the origin of the X, Y, Z axis. So you can see me nudging it over here and I'll get it right where I want it. So now that six inches is coplanar with that six inch division on my scale. And having set these overalls and some of these larger room dimensions, I'll go now back in and get smaller and smaller as I go. I've got that exterior wall where I need it. I'll pull three foot clear for the stairs between railings. I'll pull six inches so I can work the railings in. Another three foot clear, a four inch wall backing up that closet. Man, yeah, four inches? Yeah, got to fix that. Space is at a premium with this plan. Now I'll come across two feet for the inside of that closet. And I'll make mistakes and change my thinking midstream. So I'm going to erase these again. I highlight that eraser and then just flick these lines. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you, SketchUp. So let me fix that. I'm going to give a little more oomph to this uh, space, this zone for the railing. So I'm sure I can get some to fit in there. Let me make that... Mm, 10, let's go with one foot, be generous. Finish that off with three feet. And that'll be the back side of the stair. And then I'll add four inches for that closet. So I'll speed up the video a little bit at this point. I think that gives you the idea. You certainly see this is my philosophy where I'm working from the largest possible dimensions and breaking it down to to the smallest dimensions, but always using standard dimensions like a typical American builder would use. So trying to keep things to basic divisions of a foot and making my bathrooms, or for instance, here's a three foot wide area for the toilet, very standard. Uh, I'll make my bathrooms five feet deep, closets two feet, and this helps you break things down so you can manage them in the end and figure out well, what do I need to change because of that? Because the top dimensions can't really budge. The overall dimensions are somewhat flexible, but the smallest dimensions can't really budge. So that's the philosophy. Those of you who have watched this video first, instead of watching the first one first, here's that video and be sure to go back to this. You'll see a link in the description below. And I've got other SketchUp videos showing how SketchUp works with Procreate and Morfolio Trace. Be sure to check those out. And for those of you headed to Vancouver in September, I can't wait to meet you and talk to you and hack around with SketchUp and Procreate. I'll see you then.